Hi everyone, welcome to another lesson in the motion series, this one called Energy and Collisions. If you've covered the lesson uh, to do with collisions in momentum, <clears throat> I may have mentioned a common exam question involves a car crashing into a wall and coming to a stop over time. And the car has some momentum here, so it has initial momentum, we'll say a thousand, and the final momentum is equal to zero because it's come to a stop. So the change momentum is equal to the initial momentum of the car, which is also equal to the impulse given by the wall. And that impulse is given by the force times the time. If the impulse doesn't change, so a thousand equals force times time, and the collision takes place over a long time, the car will experience relatively little force. But if the car comes to a stop very quickly, so the time of the collision is low, then a lot of force is experienced by the car and its occupants. Energy and collisions runs off the same concepts. This sled has some kinetic energy here, but when it runs into this snowbank at the end, a force is applied if this sled is now in the snowbank, a force has been applied in that direction there. We'll actually draw it from there. So a force has been applied there. And that force works to take the kinetic energy out of the sled. So the change in kinetic energy, we'll just throw around and figure in 1000. That is equal to the work done by the snowbank on the sled. And that work is equal to the force times the distance the sled plows into that snowbank. If the snow is soft and the sled plows right into it, the distance is large and therefore the force experienced by the sled is small. If the snow is very hard and the sled barely penetrates it, then the distance is low and the force experienced is large. So soft snow, large distance, small force, Hard snow, low distance, high force. You can see how it's similar to that impulse type question. So we'll set it up now, this question, and we'll find out, well actually I'll put forward what we're trying to work out. So this sledder and the sled have combined mass 100 kilograms. They have initial velocity 7 meters per second and when he plows into that snowbank the displacement that occurs during the collision is equal to 1.5 meters. Two things we want to figure out. First of all what is the work done by the snowbank on the sled and the sledder and secondly what was the average force experienced, uh, average force experienced by the sledder and the sled as it plowed into that snowbank there. So take the sledder and the sled to be one object, I'll just call it the sled. First of all, we know that this sledder has some initial kinetic energy. So E K is equal to a half M V squared, which is equal to one half times 100 times 7 squared which comes to 50 times 49 or 2450 joules and so I'll just make it clear he's come to a complete stop here so final velocity is zero if he had here 2450 joules worth, worth of kinetic energy and no force acted on him during this journey to a stop except that of the snowbank. It means that change in kinetic energy that it, he experienced, so change in, change in kinetic energy, the magnitude is equal to 2450, don't worry about negatives for now. All of this change in kinetic energy must have been the result of the work done by the snowbank on the sled. So the work is equal to 2,450 joules. And if 2,450 joules worth of work is done in the opposite direction to the motion of a sledder who had 
2,450 joules worth of kinetic energy, of course it will take him down to zero kinetic energy, giving us that final velocity of zero. So now we have to find the average force. That work done by the snowbank was done by a force acting over a distance, the force acting in that direction there. And we know the distance it acted over, since the displacement is equal to 1.5. So 2450 is equal to force times 1.5. Dividing both sides by 1.5, we get 1, or roundabout, 1633 newtons is equal to the force. The, so this is the average force experienced by the letter. In reality, if we graphed the force over the distance like that, we'd end up with, if he's ploughing into the snow, you'd expect the snow to be uh, harder in here than out here. So the force might lift like that, then drop down to zero as it comes to a stop. But if we don't have the graph, all we can, sa all we can say is if the area here was equal to 2450, and the displacement here was equal to 1.5, then the average force must have been equal to 1633 newtons. So it's easy to find the average force. Let's make this question a little more difficult. Instead of having the sledder come to an absolute halt, we'll say that the sledder's final velocity was negative 2 meters per second. So the sledder actually is bouncing back off the snow a little. And again, let's find the work done by the snow on the sledder and the final, uh, oh, and the force, the average force experienced. The work done, it's not equal to the change in kinetic energy. Because let's have a look at the final kinetic energy here. Kinetic energy is equal to a half mv squared, which is equal to a half 100 2 squared. That's 50 times 4, or 200 joules. The change in kinetic energy between 2450 and 200 is equal to 2250. But that is not the work done by the snow because 2450 joules worth of work was done to bring the sledder to a halt right before uh, he bounced back and then an extra 200 joules worth of energy was a uh, 200 joules worth of work was done to accelerate him to negative 2 meters a second that way so the total work done is actually equal to 2,450 joules worth of energy to bring him to a halt plus 200 joules worth of energy to accelerate him in the opposite direction <coughs> which comes to a total of 2,650 joules. That kind of thinking has to be done bit by bit like that because energy is actually a scalar and so it doesn't have direction. But we know that there's a big difference between someone having kinetic energy in that direction and someone having kinetic energy in that direction there. So you've got to think about it uh, as coming to a halt and then being accelerated in the opposite direction. Now average force. If there really had been 2,650 joules worth of energy done in that direction there, and that work was done by a force over a distance, then 2,650 is equal to the force times, the distance hasn't changed, that's 1.5. So 2,650 divided by 1.5 is equal to the force, that's around about equal to 1767 newtons. As we would expect if we solve this question using momentum principles, if an object is moving and comes to a halt, we expect one force. What was that first force? 1633. 
But if an object is moving to the right, and then we turn it around completely and start it moving to the left, we expect that more force must have been required to achieve that. So, yeah, in this case, we also have more force being applied, and it's 1767 newtons uh, worth of force. The next energy video I want to do is on stopping distance.